Hi, welcome to another video in this series on the Raspberry Pi. This is the third episode of the series. We previously saw how to set up our Raspberry Pi for use. In this episode, we talk about using the GPIO on Raspberry Pi using the C language. Now, there are multiple ways to do so in C as well. In this video, we focus on how to use GPIO using the SysFS framework in C. Let's go. We previously saw the feature-rich 40-pin connector of the Raspberry Pi. You have primarily power, communication, and sound pins. The best part is, all of these I.O. can also be used as general-purpose I.O. unless absolutely necessary to use them as something else. These are some of the more popular ways of using the GPIO in the Raspberry Pi. There are primarily three categories, graphical programming, C or C++ and Python. You also have some other methods, but we will restrict our discussion to these methods only today. As far as graphical programming goes, the Scratch framework is used and is very popular. This framework allows simple and intuitive drag and drop programming and is highly suited for someone who either does not know how to program or does not like to. As far as C or C++ goes, there are multiple ways to access the GPIO. You have the SysFS framework, the libgpio-d, the pygpio libraries, and by using Processing3 support, which is primarily based on C++. Out of these, SysFS and libgpio-d are the more popular ones and widely used. With the newer Linux kernel, the SysFS interface has been deprecated, but the usage is still far and wide as a lot of developers have grown up using this framework. For Python, there is tremendous community support and we shall talk about it in a future video. The GPIO0 is the more user-friendly way as it allows you to create an application level use case, for example an LED or a button, compared to something like the rpi.gpio library which lets the developer choose what to do with the IO line. By the way, GPIO0 uses rpi.gpio in the background. In today's video, we will talk about the GPIO usage in Raspberry Pi and any other Linux system for that matter using the SysFS framework. But first, let us understand a little bit about what the SysFS is. SysFS is a pseudo file system provided by the Linux kernel. It exports information about various subsystems as well as hardware devices and even device drivers. The key thing is that every configurable attribute becomes a file that you can write to. This is the most generic abstraction and can be used by any application with file I.O. capability. The most key thing to understand is that any item that is abstracted, be it the subsystems, hardware devices or drivers, all of them will be represented as files. As an example, GPIO are generally hardware register based peripherals inside processors, but using the SysFS framework, the GPIO is represented as a set of files. Let us take a close look at these files and how they can help us to use the GPIO as such. By far the most important files are the export and unexport. The export file is written to when you want to make a particular GPIO usable. For example, to make GPIO2 usable, you just write the string with the number 2 to the export file. In order to make the GPIO2 unusable and in a way give it back to the kernel to be allocated to other applications, write the string 2 to the unexport file. After a particular GPIO is exported, a folder with the name GPIO and then the number is created. For example, if we wrote 2 to the export file, you would see a folder called GPIO2. Once you CD into the GPIO2 folder, you will see a number of items out of which the attributes of interest to us are active low, direction, edge and value. This is very similar to what we do with other embedded systems also. Let us find out how. The GPIO direction 
can be set using the direction attribute. Just writing the value out to this file will configure this IO line as an output and writing in will make it an input. If the direction of the GPIO is set to in, you can detect edges on the GPIO using the edge attribute. Writing rising, falling or both to this attribute will allow you to capture these events that is rising edge or falling edge or both the edges to the user space. The value attribute is pretty flexible. If the direction is set to output, you can write a 0 or a 1 to it to change its state to low or high. If the GPIO is set as input, then reading the value attribute will help get the current state of this GPIO. If the edge has been configured and is of interest to the application, simply polling the value attribute for a change will help detect changes to the state of this IO and also act on it. We will soon write an example that does exactly this. A very interesting attribute is the active low that allows you to flip the meaning of low and high for this particular GPIO. Simply put, if active low is 1, then a value 1 indicates low and a value 0 indicates high. Can you think of a use case for such a configuration? Do let us know in the comment box below. Alright, enough of the study. We will now demonstrate the usage of the SysFS framework using a very simple example. We will use almost all the attributes we learnt about using a red LED connected to GPIO 17 and a push button or an input sensor connected to GPIO 26. So this is what we will be doing. At the start of the application, we will turn on a red LED. Then we wait for the button or an input to be received 10 times and then turn off the LED. We will use polling on the value attribute to detect the sensor input at runtime. In the actual implementation, we will use a proximity sensor rather than a button. And finally, we turn off the red LED. Simple enough. Let us quickly write this application. And now the main function. That's it, that is the end of this video. Thank you for tuning in and do leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more such videos. See you soon with a brand new video about the world's favorite computer. Bye.